Chidi the Podcast, presented by Just Chidi Productions. Hi there, I'm your host, Fondue. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about DNA and cheese. Whoa. We're talking DNA and lactose tolerance. Cool. We're talking DNA and smells. Ew. And we're even going to talk about DNA and cheese identification. Whoa. We're going to discuss human DNA and how it was used to make vegan cheese. What? And we're going to learn how DNA on cheese has helped solve crimes. Wow. And of course, every week we tell a new, very cheesy joke. Yeah, joke. Stay tuned for episode 76. 23 and cheese on Just Cheesy, the podcast. So cheesy, according to theconversation.com, in an article called The Surprising Role Cheese Has Played in Human Evolution, Mm. they had something in here that I thought was really interesting. Really? Did you know that approximately two-thirds of the world's population is lactose intolerant? What does it mean? Well, it means people with lactose intolerance, they experience really bad symptoms if they eat cheese or any other kind of dairy product. Oh, no. They suffer from bloating and diarrhea and flatulence. (laughs) Yes, that's right. The article discusses a lot about bioarchaeology. You see, for quite a long time, humans were unable to drink milk after they grew out of infancy. Because like the people of today who are lactose intolerant, they lack the ability to process the sugars in the dairy. The scientists used ancient DNA analysis, and they found the appearance of the lactase gene all the way back in 2500 BC. Holy cow. But they said there's even evidence from the Neolithic period that milk was being consumed. So this analysis lets us see a shift in our DNA going back all the way to 2500 BC. But did you also know that DNA can play a role in how you smell? It can? Yep, it's true. According to LATimes.com, scientists are studying the DNA of hundreds of people and they're testing their sense of smell. Richard Newcomb of the New Zealand Institute for Plant and Food Research spent much of his career examining smell in insects. He turned his attention to humans, and he thought there might be a way to help food industries target their foods to people that might appreciate them more. Hmm. He assigned 10 different scents to the participants. He found what he called a genetic basis for four of the 10 fragrances, apples, violets, blue cheese, and malt, which is the main ingredient in a lot of beer. The genes responsible for detecting the scents were spread out across the genome, and it appears there was a single gene responsible for each of them. It says here they were even able to pinpoint the exact mutation responsible for smelling violets. Holy cow. And they said in case you're mapping your own genome, it's yeah. on chromosome 11. Whoa. We learned a little bit about DNA in humans, yeah. but did you know that DNA fingerprinting techniques are used to uncover cheese microbes? Whoa. According to cortis.europa.eu... An international team of researchers have been using that same technology to identify microbes on smear-ripened cheese. And they have identified eight different microbes on the French cheese Reblochon. They said that the new group of bacteria, the (laughs) Reblochoni, was responsible for ripening, influencing taste, texture, and smell of the cheese. And according to CheeseCultureMag.com, DNA is actually helping the Swiss combat counterfeit cheese. According to the article, it says that according to Bloomberg, approximately 10% of all Emmentaler sold in supermarkets are counterfeits made by Italy or other countries. Oh, no. And this cheese is usually produced under tight regulations. Yeah. The article goes on to say that scientists have actually identified a bacteria that can be added to true Emmentaler without altering the appearance, texture, or taste. Interesting. And because of this, they can send the cheese from a grocery store back to a lab in Bern for DNA testing to make sure it bears the strains of the special bacteria. Wow. If the cheese is found to be counterfeit, they ask the retailer to pull it off the shelves and reveal the supplier. Whoa. And the organization can apply for an injunction and even sue for damages. Whoa. And according to a SmithsonianMag.com article, 
Scientists have been sampling cheeses from all over the world to extract the DNA. Really? They match the DNA genes to existing databases, and they can identify which organisms are present in the cheese. Wow. And they say here, and I quote, the way we do that is sort of like microbial CSI, you know, <laughs> when they go out to a crime scene investigation. Wow. But in this case, we are looking at what microbes are there. Wow. When the scientists examined ripened cheeses, they found microbiomes, and this showed just a very slight resemblance to the original cultures. Really? And more than half of the bacteria present were new. Really? So they wanted to know where they came from. Yeah. And some of them were from places other than cheese. Oh. They found ones that were commonly found in soil, seawater, okay. and chicken litter. What is chicken litter? Uh, yeah, according to Wikipedia, poultry litter is... Uh, spilled feed, okay. feathers, materials such as bedding, and um, excrement. Ew. They also identified our old buddy bee linens or Brevibacterium linens. Oh, yeah. This is the one that we say smells like sweat or dirty feet. feet. And it's the one yeah. that gives the stinky to Limburger cheese. Yep. Because this is the bacteria that can also be found in damp areas of skin between our toes. <laughs> so DNA is used to tell us what is in and on our cheese. Wow. Limburger cheese is not a sponsor. Nope. But if it was, the ad would go right here. Have you ever wanted to listen to the web? Yeah. Well, Newsly makes that possible. They do? They're an all-in-one audio super app for iOS and Android. Super app. You can listen to trending articles on the web on topics that you choose and get them read to you in a natural human voice. What kind of topic? Sports, cheese? tech, business, cheese. science. Cheese? I'm sure there's even cheese. Yay! They even have an entire section for podcasts. Are we there? Of course we are. Ooh. It's one of my new favorite podcast apps. They even have digital radio. Holy cow. Just go to www.newsly.me to download it free. Whoa. Or use the link in the description. If you use the promo code CHEESY, Cheesy. that'll get you one month free premium subscription. Yay, Newsly. Now, back to the podcast. Did you know that according to news? Sky.com, they're using human DNA oh. and baker's yeast in order to make vegan-friendly cheese. People cheese? Well, they're not actually taking the real DNA, but they are using DNA blueprints. Oh. They're inserting that into the yeast. Phew. It creates cheese that is vegan-compatible because of the lack of animal products. Ah, okay. And they're even hoping that the milk proteins made from our species will mean less chance of allergic reactions. Nice. Did you know that DNA left on cheese has been used to solve several different crimes. Really? According to link.springer.com, there was physical evidence in the form of what they called a high-quality bite mark high quality. discovered on a piece of cheese found at a scene of a crime. Whoa. They used DNA samples that they collected from the burglar and they matched it to the bite mark, oh. which had saliva on it from the crime, and they were able to identify the suspect. Holy cow. And according to discovermagazine.com, this isn't necessarily DNA, but they were able to use a cheese bite mark and compare it to the bite mark of a murder suspect. Whoa. The suspect bit into a piece of cheese. Yeah. It left marks. They were able to use a local dentist Whoa. and they used white plaster to make casts of the bite marks in the cheese and also of the teeth of three suspects. Whoa. And according to insider.si.edu, They've actually been testing the theory of using food to identify people's DNA. Wow. They used things like apples mm. and manchego cheese and chocolate donuts. Ooh. Apples didn't work well because there's so much acid in the apple's juice that it breaks down the DNA at room temperature. Oh. Because cheese was solid and firm, the saliva stayed on the surface wow. and the donut was porous, so it absorbed saliva. Wow. So they were both used and they both did a great job. Wow. So I guess the bottom line is if you're going to commit a crime, don't leave any food behind. Yeah, eat it. This is not an endorsement of committing crimes. Don't do crime and stay in school. I, I think I'm ready for a joke, Cheesy. Yeah, me too. Okay. What did the cheese say when it learned about DNA testing? I have no idea. I hope they don't find any wayward DNA. Oh my, that was so bad. <laughs> Listen, it, it was really hard to either create or or find a DNA and cheese joke, so you have to appreciate what we've done here. But it was not good. I know, I know. It may not have been good, nope. but it was absolutely a little bit cheesy. 
Thanks for listening to Just Cheesy, the podcast, episode 76, Thank you. 23, and Cheese. We hit an unbelievable milestone <laughs> this week, 10,000 total listens. Yeah, we did. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and we hope to have continued success. Stay cheesy, everybody.